That's it. You've gone too far this time. Where's my goddamn gun? Ah. Ah. We're never right for each other. You've probably been saving yourself for all those babes you got stabbed somewhere. Doris. Number one, there is no other woman in my life. And number two, if there was, she'd know I was living with someone who I love. Or I used to love. Damn right! After the honeymoon, I'd feel like a new man. So would you. <gasps> Where's my damn hat? on your mind, Miss Dolan. Nothing like this has ever happened to me before, Mr. Dobbs. Harry, nothing like what? I need you to follow a man. He can't know that you're doing it. Don't worry, he'll never know. I could be put in serious jeopardy. Why do you want me to follow this guy? I can't tell you that. Please. They say you can be trusted. Who says I can be trusted? I saw it in a phone book in the train station. Please, Mr. Dobbs, we haven't much time. I'll pay you $2,000 plus expenses to follow Rick for one month. He's coming to this restaurant tonight. Cozy. Be here at 9 o'clock. I'm staying at the Hotel Saint-Simon. I want to know who she is. She? Uh-huh. It's very difficult for me living in another place, wondering when it's my turn. Shortens one's life, makes one feel unlucky, and that's not for me. I've always been a lucky person. He's six feet tall and has sandy hair. He wears glasses and dresses smartly. He also smells nice. Oh, well, that's a relief. He may appear very charming, but believe me, he's dangerous. need his name, address, <laughs> type of car, tag numbers if you got them. What do you mean dangerous?
operative began surveillance on February 14th. Subject known as Rick was seen leaving the Blue Danube nightclub accompanied by a female companion. Gotta be married. Fed from our hotel. Hey, Miss Dolan's room, please. I'm sorry, Miss Dolan's not in. You sure? Yes. Any message, sir? Uh, no, 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 no messages. Thank you. Excuse me, sir. Uh, you know. I saw this blonde-haired guy leaving here with his wife, and he sure looks like this guy I was in the army with, but I can't tell. His hair's longer, and I don't remember his last name. Uh, you mean I... Mr. King? Mr. King. Uh, nope, <laughs> wrong guy. <laughs> Friend Rick is going by the name of Frederick King now. Did you get a good look at him? Good enough. And her? Look, Miss Dolan, excuse me for being blunt, but... Please. I like blunt. No, I mean this is all pretty clear, right? Mr. King is a happily married man. He never told you. Told me what? Why don't I just charge you the retainer fee? I'll even buy you dinner. Or maybe I'll give you half the retainer fee back. I want you to continue to follow him. Are you sure you want this guy in your life? Mr. Dobbs. Harry. As long as I know what Rick is doing, I have a life. 
Gilles. Dinner will have to wait, I'm afraid. I have a previous engagement. Mr. King, flight 2495, gate 89. Thank you. Uh, I'm on the same flight as that gentleman. Flight 2495, right? Yeah. Do you have a ticket? Uh, no, uh, I'll need one. Uh, round trip coach. Hi, babe, it's me. Yeah, I miss you, too. No, I, I won't be able to call you for a couple of days. I'm going to be moving around quite a bit, you know. Oh, I miss you, too, Doris. <laughs> yeah. Look, this is going to be a very rough couple of months for both of us.
about going out to Culver today? Sure, we can do that. All right. Wake up! <laughs> See that blue and white taxi? Yeah, follow it. Okay. Don't get too close. You know, I had a customer that was following a cab like this one time, and boy, was that something. Yeah? What happened? Wound up halfway across the state in a drunk tank where I met my third wife. She was the nutritionist at the honor farm. Hey, Ira, how are you? Good, good, Jimbo. How you doing? Pretty good. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Mr. Drawing Paul today. You better give me a receipt. You don't you don't want me to wait? No, just give me a receipt. Last guy uh, I picked up wanted me to wait. I think he was on an expense account or something. You can tell by the way they're dressed, and he had a funny little mustache. Okay, okay, just don't get lost. How, how could I get lost? He's gonna be sitting here. No, you're not. You're gonna follow that truck. Going to that farmhouse down there, I could just take you right on down there. Wouldn't be a problem. Oh, would you That's just it. shut up? I'll be right back. I'm going to sign it for tax purposes, so it's legitimate. Fine! Your room's down on the end. OK. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. I'm leaving. Leaving? I'll make a chart, Larry. My job's finished. Well, what does that mean? Well, wire me the money. I'll be here about two more I days. I never knew he was mixed up in any... I have the feeling you're holding something back, Mr. Dobbs. Hey, I told you what I saw. He visited someone on a ranch somewhere. Was there a woman on the ranch? I'm not very soft, Larry. Yeah. Hold it, Larry. Looked like a family to me. What if I told you we were to be married once? After all, she didn't want to be a bigamist. No, Larry, I never was. I loved him. Well... Just don't turn your back on him, Mr. Dobbs. Unless you want a hole in it. I'll keep that in mind. Call me tomorrow. I'll be here. Right, and I'll be here. You crossed yourself as well as everybody else. Room service, please. Oh. 
Hello? Hello, Doris. Harry! Uh, where are you? Hey, sounds like you're having a party there. Oh, I'm just listening to music. Yeah, with who? A few friends. Hey, uh, pour me another highball, would you? Is it, you want me never to work, Doris? Is that what you want? I don't want anything anymore, Harry. I've wised up. And with each day, I learn more. Price is two fifty. One seventy five. <laughs> Price is two fifty. <laughs> two hundred. Price is two fifty. I'll tell you what. I'll uh, I'll give you one fifty for as long as I use it, and then when I'm finished, you get it back free. How about that? Oh, you mean rental? That's right, rental. <laughs> well, see, I'm not in the rental business. Price is two fifty. <laughs> You help make these? Yes. Adi. Hello. Can I help you? Well, <laughs> I seem to be lost. Where are you going? That's the problem. I really don't know. Parked my car up the road, saw your house. Say, hey, Ellen, what's up? It's fine. Maybe we can help you get back on track. Um, where are you coming from? Culver. If I could use your phone, I'd be glad to pay for it. Don't be silly. Come on in. Thank you. <laughs> Got one more lunch to deliver. Do you want some lunch? I can fix your lunch inside. Uh, no, thank you. I'm in a hurry, but a cup of coffee would be great. You got it. All right. I'll race you to the door. Come on. Phone's in here around the corner, sir. Thank you. Johnson. Harry Johnson. That's right. Where are you from? You're not from here. No, I'm not. I, I just need to use the phone. Mom, do we have to let him use the phone? Honey, you finish your coloring, okay? Cute. Johnson. That's right, I'm lost. Merle wants to know where I am. Uh, Crooked River Ranch, Northwest Prairie Road. Uh, Lady of the House says Crooked River Ranch, Northwest Prairie Road. Oh, really? Uh, mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm.
Aha. Aha. Thanks for the water, Mrs. McGraw. You're welcome, Art. So he wants 300 gross of uh, metal and then 200 gross plastic. Great, thanks. Bye. Did you figure out where I... you're going? Oh, yes, thanks. Uh, boy, if I had this place, I'd be the happiest guy in the world. Yeah, well, it takes a lot of work, mm. Mr. Johnson. That it does. Still, it brings everyone so close together, you know what I mean? Hello. Hi. James McGraw. Johnson, Harry Johnson. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. I was just telling your wife what a wonderful spread you have here. I'm in uh, grommet sales myself. Grommets are those little round plastic and metal... <laughs> yeah, I know what a grommet is. You do? Sure. Oh, that's better than most people. So did you make your call? Uh, yes, sir, thank you. And uh, thanks for that great coffee, Mrs. McGraw. You're welcome. Bye. Bye, little girl. Town Country Club in beautiful Hilton Head, South Carolina, where Harry Dobbs is teeing off on the first hole. Oh, he sliced that one into the rough. This has always been a tough fairway for Dobbs. Babe, I know it's tough. You've got to bear with me, hon. I mean, it's only going to be a few more years that I'll work at this place, and then we can start doing the thing, you know. OK, look, I better go, babe, OK? I love you. OK, bye-bye. Good news, Jim? Yeah. More coffee, honey? That cheeseburger to go will be up in just a second. I'm gonna hit you again, Jim. Oh, man. Sure is good to see you. <sighs> yeah, it's good to see you, Carol. How long are you here for this time? Hey, well, I might leave for a couple days, but I'm here for a few months now, anyway. Hey, how's that other spread of yours? Is that doing OK? Doubled our grazing, sold real well at market. Thank you. 
Take it easy, Jimbo. Arab. Thanks, lady. My goddamn car committed suicide. You think you could give me a lift? Seeing as how we're both staying at the same motel. here visiting friends and I've seen you three times in two days and you have not told me why maybe we have some of the same friends one word and you walk Thanks again for the lift. Maybe next time we can discuss that book you're reading. City. Did you talk to him? Yes, but by accident. What'd you talk about? Well, we didn't. We didn't. No, his car broke down and I gave him a ride. That was pretty stupid, don't you think? It was unavoidable. Oh, yeah? And what else was unavoidable? What is that supposed to mean? Your agency said I could trust you. Look, I am not going to have this conversation with you, Doris. They said a woman could get closer to him. Now that I know what they mean, I want my money back. Look, I'm going to get off the phone now, all right? If you want to replace me, that is your privilege. But right now, I'm going to get some sleep. Yeah, for a long time, because you're fired. Room, please. I'm sorry, she checked out. What? Miss Dolan checked out, sir. Did she leave a forwarding number? No, sir, she didn't. Right. <laughs> this better be good. What? Mr. Dobbs. Oh, uh, Miss Dolan. Mm -hmm. Rick called me. I'm frightened. Please come back. D did you check out of the St. Simone Hotel? I had to. He threatened me. I'm in the Devonshire now, registered under Phillips. He'll kill me if he finds me, Mr. Dobbs. Uh, Harry, uh, relax. He can't get to you before I do. 
Uh, are you at all interested in his second wife? What did you say? Another wife? Look, I'll, I'll talk to you about it all when I get in tomorrow, OK? Yes. Don't tell me anything else now. Thank you, Mr. Dobbs. Harry. Good night. One of us is going to move. Not before the other explains what is going on. I don't know what you're talking about. I can find out, you know. I'm not going to be very happy if you're working for McGraw or King. Is that a threat? Let's just say I'm very good at what I do. Fooled me. What's that supposed to mean? You get too close to your subjects, Mr. Dobbs. You mean because I went to his house? Well, you're wrong. That just happened to be a very, very shrewd move. Mm. And talk about getting too close. You got a Burgundy Super Classic at the airport? Mm hmm? And what about picking me up on the road? No. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cardinal mm -hmm. Sin. That was unavoidable. What are you on your off hours now? Look, I want you to move. Uh, bring us a couple of Bloody Marys, will you, honey? No ice, no juice, please. Look, Mr. Dobbs. Harry. Harry, this is not ethical. If we were discussing ethics, it'd be pretty silent here. Ooh. Okay. Uh, you better hang on to this, because we'll probably be ordering a few more. OK, thank you. luck to refuse a toast. Does that book explain when you're falling for someone, whether it's the smile or the situation you're going for? Are you in love with someone, Mr. Dobbs? Harry. Do you think that she is in love with you? Well, that's hard to tell. She's got to temper that one. But see, we're sort of broken up now. Demolished, basically. Oh. <laughs> but when I think back on it, I can't even remember the tough times. Are you waiting for her? Waiting? Yes, the one who is in love always waits. Says who? It's in the book. The only waiting I've been doing is outside some guy's house in both houses. <laughs> Maybe you're in love with someone else. Yeah? Well, who? Now, oh, come on now. You got to see me through this. <laughs> Please. Please. Please, please, please. Please. It is a fact that you can squash the person that you are in love with under the weight of love itself, especially during an argument. Squash? Yes, and then something usually happens that makes you jealous and feel threatened. <laughs> Not me, and sorry. You say that you can't get hurt because you are no longer a part of it. Part of what? This feeling of love that you have, but you're suffering because, in fact, they're not a part of it, and then you blame yourself. No, it's all and her fault. you feel guilty and you suffer. Oh, swell. So either because you want to feel guilty or because you want to show the other person how very unhappy you are, you become critical of yourself. You change your clothes, you change your habit, you change your hair, and you wait. 
It's the lover's signature. What is? They're the ones who wait. Am I gonna see you around? <sighs> no, Mr. Dobbs. From now on, when you turn around, all you're gonna see is your shoulder. No, I mean, you know, a show, a dinner, uh, or something unethical. No, I'm afraid that I can't, I can't do that. Why, are you waiting for someone else? Yes. Oh. No, I mean, I have an agency I have to deal with. Oh, forget the agency. Hang out a shingle. Go into business for yourself. It's the only way. Like you. That's right. You know I can find out your name. Oh, uh, really? You know, I'm not so sure of that. Well, you can make it easier. You can test me. <sighs> Stella. Oh, I like that. Got another name? Don't say Smith. You don't want to know me. Too late for that. But why, why do you think that your man has two families? Most bigamists do. Who hired you to follow me? Do you think that he loves them both equally? Does it matter? Well, don't you think it would to him, I mean? Would you stop with that stuff? Uh, I, was it Miss Dolan? Believe me, it's, it's, not, it's not important. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Would you like a drink? Uh, Cognac, all right. Sure. Please, go on in and sit down. I'll be right there. I didn't much like the airplane trip. <laughs> you poor dear. You must be exhausted. Please, go on. Why don't we start with what you know? It'd be a lot easier. Well, I'm afraid my story is very complicated, Harry. May I call you Harry? You think I still love him, don't you? You think that's why I came to town? I know he does. Be close to him. Wait my turn. Take my chances. Well, I could never love him again. Especially if what you said on the phone is true. How true it is, I can't tell you. But I know it to be a fact. Just let him go. Wipe him out of your memory. Whatever you do, don't be jealous. You'll, you'll start hurting yourself. You'll feel guilty. Your hair, you'll, you'll cut your hair. And, and I, I kind of like it the way it is. He's so very dangerous. He's taken money from people and beaten them up. Maybe. Even murder. All around good guy, huh? I'm really glad you're here. My God, it's him.
Dry cleaning. Thanks. There you go. Bye. Thank you, sir. I think I'd better get a room in this hotel on this floor if I can. Yes, I want you to. But now that you're here, I feel that no one can lay a finger on me. Right. Uh, keep your door locked. Don't let anybody in. Yes. I'm going to check in now. Yes. Over here on your right, we have the honor bar, Mr. Dobbs. We do have 24-hour room service available. On the rooftop, we have a 90-foot pool. Oh. And I hope that you enjoy your stay. No golf course. Some of our larger suites do have putting greens. Thank you very much. He's just checked in on the same floor. Twenty-four hours in a day, Buster. Use them. Out. So I suppose you think I'm a failure, right, Corinne? What do you want to hear? That people don't get fired? Well, they do. That's the bottom line, kid. But I didn't do anything wrong. Who said anything about wrong? The client didn't like what you were doing, so you got canned, pure and simple. Yeah, well, I didn't deserve it. You should have stood up for me. Stella, from the beginning, I'm wondering what you're doing here. I mean, you wander in, say you want detective work, like it's a haircut. Your first big assignment, you blow it. Oh, so I let you down. Is that what you're saying? I'm saying you're smart, you look OK, you got some class. I have to do this kind of work just to get attention. You don't. I mean, why do you want to hang around shady characters looking for things that never add up? You got to be a little weird for that, Stella, and you're not weird. I mean, not that weird. Not enough to keep a man away. Whatever happened to that guy? He come back or what? What? Look, I know you're on the rebound from a bad love deal, but this work ain't a cure-all, you know. Well, so you want to get rid of me, Corinne? Stella, I am trying to help you. You're the kind of gal who should be out with a guy on a date, not a stakeout. Look, you let me worry about the men in my life. And you let me run my business the way I have to. So I am fired. Oh, that's, that's fine. That's fine. It's just, just great. It's just perfect. Perfect. It's stolen. It's me, Harry. Open up in the name of the law. Stolen. Miss Phillips? Stella. Hey, I thought I fired you. Yeah, I, I got your message. Well, then what do you want? Well, actually, I was wondering if you had a number on Harry.
Have you known my husband very long, Mr. Wyman? No, not really, but long enough. Mm. So, what is the message my husband asked you to deliver? Mrs. King, does the name James McGraw have any meaning to you? Um, no. That's not familiar to me. Why? Well, he's someone your husband knows quite well. And? And, well, he's with him right now, actually. Well, as I said when you first came in, I'm not that familiar with Freddie's business dealings. Is there something wrong, Mr. Wyman? Why do I get the feeling that something is wrong? Freddie's all right, isn't he? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, he's got his hands full, but he's fine otherwise. <laughs> You seem so nervous. I'm feeling something else. I, I do apologize about that, Mrs. King. Um, to tell you the truth, something has happened. To Freddie? Has something happened to oh, Freddie? No, to a friend of mine, someone who Fred knows. Uh, I don't understand. But her name is Miss Dolan. And um, your husband... Um, yes? Well, he, he knows that I know her. And I thought maybe he, he might have mentioned her to you. I, I, I haven't seen her in a while. You're confusing me, Mr. Wyman. Oh, oh, I'm sorry about that. I Look, I can see that you know nothing about Miss Dolan or Mr. McGraw. Uh, and I'm kind of anxious, you know. I, oh, I uh... anxiety is the devil's impatience. <laughs> uh, look, uh, Mrs. King, I, uh, I, I really appreciate it if you didn't say anything at all about all this to Fred. He might think I'd gone around the bend, you know. No, I... no, <laughs> he'd understand. You're friends. Well, uh, a friend in need is a friend to avoid. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to bother you about all this, ma'am. No. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Thirsty. You? Uh, Bellhop says she's still not back in her room. But you said that her clothes were still there. Yeah. So we know that she didn't leave permanently if she left alone. Right. We? Yeah, you need a dictionary, you and me. Ah, uh, that ain't written anywhere. No, Harry, this case is way too spread out. You need a partner. You're looking at my partner. All right, Harry, fine, fine. You can be the boss. I was just trying to help you solve this thing. Why? Because it's so fucking exciting. Oh, Annie Oakley. Yeah, when there's a gun in my hand. Yeah? Whose gun? <laughs> I just thought maybe a woman's intuition could have helped you crack this thing. It's the first time we've touched. I mean, I could have gotten much more out of Mrs. King than you did. I got what I needed. You got nothing. What I needed to know. Oh, what? I didn't want to hurt her. Well, sometimes it helps to hurt. She really loves this guy. She said that. She didn't need to say it. Oh, suddenly you're the expert. No, you're the expert. You got something, Stella. I don't know what it is, but you got it. You ever been married, Stella? Yeah, me either. You know, they say marriage is the best thing that's supposed to happen between two people, or the worst. Ever want kids, Stella? Kids? <laughs> yeah, little people running around with your face. I know what they are. Yes, I would like kids, but not now. I didn't okay. mean now. Not at all, now. So who's the man in your life, Stella? Well, are you going to call the cops or what? You're still waiting? Your friend is missing. The guy who might have done it can hurt people. 
in strange ways. Now, either you can sit here and continue to flirt with me, or maybe we can help each other and save someone's life. Or fuck them up. Harry, one of us has to fly up north tomorrow. Right, me. Fine, okay. I will keep an eye on the King House and the hotel and maybe make some calls. No. No. Okay, then I will leave first thing in the morning and you can reach me at the same motel. No. God damn you! Look, this guy could be dangerous. Besides that, there's something going on between Mrs. McGraw and a young ranch hand. Really? It could get sticky. I don't want you up there alone. Harry, if you were born stupid, you're now having a relapse. I'm gonna take the 10 a.m. plane. This is my phone here, and I also have a service. Stella, listen. You... Good night, Harry. Well, what, what was that? Comes with the slap. Well, so does this, babe. Tell him, no, right? no. I... Why not? I'll call you. Harry, come on. Stella, something's happening in a hurry. Yeah, it's a scene. You love a scene. You told me that. I didn't say that. Yes, you did. What? Yes, you said that you couldn't tell the difference between a smile and a situation. Oh, well, I'm learning fast. Besides, you got the smile. And... <laughs> this is the situation. <laughs> Please. Mm. Please. I mean, you have to get up in the morning. I have to pack. I, mean, I gotta go. I... Okay. Hey, Harry? Yeah. Good night. Uh, it's me, uh, Harry. Uh, Did I wake you? Uh, yeah. Well, what do you want me to say? About what? You know. I have to get some sleep, Harry. Stella. Yeah. Let me come over there. Oh, Harry, I don't, I don't think so. I, I have to go to sleep, okay? You ready? Stella. Yeah. Um, yeah, you, you just be careful with McGraw, okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I will. Good night, Stella. Hey, Harry. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we're partners. Yeah, <laughs> me too.
Good night, Stella. Okay. Good night. What if I said I'm falling in love with you, Stella? What if I said that? I look for a sign, Harry. Marty? Yeah? Why, uh, why are you calling me, Marty? Why, you don't want me to? You made it very clear that you didn't want me. Well, maybe that's not so clear right now. Is there somebody else? Uh, yeah. There might, there might be. Well, that's good. Good, 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 good. Mm -hmm. Stella? Take it easy. It's been real nice knowing you. Marty, you're an asshole. I got a message to deliver, pal. Out. Out. We'll continue this talk later, pal. right here. Oh, thank you. Northwest Prairie Road. Ah, thank you. Hey, Earl. Yeah, it's uh, about those packages. Thanks for the water, Mrs. McGraw. You're welcome, Mart. What is going on? Jim, you're hurting me. What do you think you're doing to me? You know, something's going on when I'm not here. Yeah, which is most of the time. Okay, what are you saying, girl? Nothing. I'm saying nothing. Of course, it doesn't help that you're never around. Oh, except my making a living. I mean, around here for me. Look, Alan, you knew I had another ranch when I met you. So we're not talking about it now. But we never talk! Does Missy know about what you've been... Hey, you in there, are you, are you about done? Yeah, I'm, I'm just about ready to hang up. Well, hang up. 
Yeah, Herman, I'll, I'll, I'll get you that delivery this afternoon. Okay, bye. Okay, all right then, bye-bye. Thanks for the coffee, ma'am. I want Keith. You were listening. This is none of your business. Oh, I see you crying. I'm a woman. That doesn't make it your affair. I'm not bothering you, Mrs. King. Just doing some weeding. Oh, always healthy to do that. In your garden, in your life. Is that why you came back, Mr. Wyman, to discuss weeding? No, uh, not directly. Then what is it? This is the second time we've met, and the second time I've wondered what your real motives are for being here. Just honest concern. I know what it's like to be gone from someone you love. Is it your purpose to come here and cast doubt upon my marriage? Are you really an enemy of my husband's disguised as a friend? I'm not an enemy at all, Mrs. King. It is all about value, Mr. Wyman. Love is my value. Love for my husband and for my family. Now, please, I'm asking you to leave. The one who loves waits. What are you implying? Are you trying to hurt me? Are you the devil? The devil? I love my husband, and he loves me. We are constantly reaffirming this fact and cannot be threatened by anyone I'm sorry, or anything, Mrs. King. including the devil! Sorry. I really am. You're the devil! Butter and cheese crackers, and you change. Thank you. Hey, Carol. Uh, you can set me up, and I'd like to square up my tab. I gotta make a phone call. I'll have whatever he's drinking. Yes, ma'am. Hi, right, honey, it's me. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to be coming home. I love you. I love you. Bye. kind enough to let me use the phone. Well, it's my phone, too. Yes, but I can't tell if you're kind yet. Some people think I'm very kind. Oh, and others? Well, they just don't know the whole story. You know, a man's got to be who he is. Most people, they just they just go on sleepwalking through life. They haven't got a fucking clue. See, I know who I am, and I ain't gonna change. So why not just go forward? Why not just forge ahead, wherever it leads? No matter what the risk. <laughs> risk? You gotta go out on a limb, because that's where the fruit's at. <clears throat> well, you're a nosy little person now, aren't you? 
rare that I encounter someone who lives life so fully. Well, you don't know the half of it. Well, I think I know both halves. What's your name? Stella Winkowski, yours. James McGraw. Fits you. Fits you like a king. Like what? A king. You know, the principle of peace in the game of chess. McGraw, I want to talk to you outside. I ain't moving from this bar stool, Arthur, except to fire your coward ass. Well, that suits me fine, because what I'll do is I'll go back there and I'll get Ellen and Missy, and you ain't doing a thing about it, all right? We won't be having no trouble here, Art. I'm going to wipe the floor with this piece of puppy shit, and then I'm going to get some answers out of you. Yeah, I hardly think that you're man enough to do either. Watch my hat for me. You don't deserve it. You're never even there. somebody if you loved her. Ah! I never hurt anybody. Stolen? Harry? Who? You lied to me, Harry. Rick's not married to anybody, are you, baby? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? He's just an acquaintance, baby. Someone I thought I could trust. Mm. Get in the car. Harley, I don't like this acquaintance. Right. Hey, we'll take care of her, pal. <laughs> Good. Are you all right, sir? Get out of here! driving you and your daughter to your nearest relative. You got one minute to pack. I'm packed. Where are we going, Mom? We're going to the airport, sweetie. Why? We're gonna go visit Grandma for a little while. What about Daddy? Did he go away again? Yeah, he's gone. Why don't you go back to sleep?
Okay, boss. See you tomorrow. Make it early, Harley. It's already early. you're ready, Angel Baby. Because ready or not, here comes Rick. How do I look? You look... Harley! Please, Harry, at least acknowledge me. I'm feeling frightened and unloved, naked to the world. He was the one. You do understand. Oh. Is there a chance for us, Harry? For you and me? What? Would we be glad and dizzy all the time? Or would we destroy each other? Glad and dizzy? Miss Dolan, get on the train. Harry, please. The truth. Aren't you in love with me? Miss Dolan, it, it would be as thrilling as winning the exacta, but I'm in love with someone else. Goodbye, Miss Dolan. Gwendolyn. Case and your ticket, Miss Dolan. You don't know what love is. 
Goodbye, Harry. You don't know. Excuse me. How lips hurt. Till you kiss the day. Ah, life. Until you flip your heart and you have lost. You don't know what I Jesus. Marty, what are you doing here? Come on, Stella. You know why I'm here. No, I don't. You're not coming in. Mm. You're not coming in. Marty? You know, I've been working hard lately. Oh. Yeah? Yeah. Trying to write. Trying to create. Trying not to think about you. Go home, Marty, now. No. Don't. Come here. Uh, don't do this to me. I'm thinking about the way that it was. I want it back. Huh. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's great. Now you're a goddamn sniper. Marty? Yes? You clear your ass out of here now. What if I said that I loved you? Look for a sign, Harry. And not what I've been seeing lately. I'd look for some tenderness. Sincerity. A sign? What about a whole billboard? And how did you find out where I lived? Like I said once before, I'm very good at what I do. 